I'm currently teaching a number theory class and the other day I did an example before we got going in class and it was cool enough that I thought I'd show it here as well. So our goal is to determine all natural numbers n so that n to the fourth plus four to the n is prime. I think there's some nice symmetry about this picture, n to the fourth plus four to the n. Okay, so let's dive right into this. I'd like to start with a pretty obvious uh, observation, and that is if n is even, then that means that n to the fourth is even, and well, four to the n is even, which in the end tells us that n to the fourth plus four to the n is bigger than two and even. Why do I say that it's bigger than two? Well, that's because there is an even prime and that is the number two. But if you've got an even number larger than two, that means that, well, it can't be prime. Okay, so, well, if it can't be prime when n is even, that means that n is odd. So let's look at that case. So since n is odd, that means we can write the following and that is n as 2m plus one, where m is a non-negative integer. That's just the standard way of expressing an odd number. Okay, cool. So now what I'll do is I'll take my n to the fourth plus four to the n. I'll assume that it's prime because we wanna find the n where this is prime. And then I will re-express this using the fact that n is 2m plus one. So here we have this is 2m plus one to the fourth, and then plus four to the 2m plus one. And here's the trick, if you will, that opens up the whole thing. And that is, well, we're gonna write this as 2m plus one to the fourth, we're not gonna change that. But we'll take this four to the 2m plus one, and we'll write it as four times two to the four m. And well, that's because two to the four m is the same thing as four to the two m. So that's actually a nice happenstance that helps us uh, work with this problem kind of nicely. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is rewrite this as x to the fourth plus four y to the fourth. And this is going to be where we have obviously just renamed these things. So I'll just put here where x is equal to, well, it's got to be 2m plus 1. And we have y is equal to, well, what does it have to be? It's going to be 2 to the m. Because, well, 2 to the 4m is the same thing as 2 to the m to the fourth power. Okay, so let's see where we can go from there. So, well, what does that mean? Well, that means that we have P is equal to X to the fourth plus four Y to the fourth. And that's gonna be with that X value and that Y value. Perhaps I'll put it up here. So with X equal two M plus one and Y is equal to two to the M. And this may not seem super helpful, but there's in fact, a really nice factorization of the right-hand side that we have here. And I think if you've done a lot of math contest preparation, you may just know this factorization, but we're gonna derive it. So what I'd like to do is rewrite this in the following way. I'm gonna write this as x to the four plus, and then I'm gonna put a gap here because I'm gonna add something. And then here we'll have four y to the four, and then we have to subtract something. And we're doing that so that this stuff inside of these orange parentheses is a perfect square. And so in fact, what we're doing here is completing the square. But instead of adding the last term, as we would usually write this in like a pre-calculus class or a high school algebra class, we're adding this middle term in. So how would we find this middle term? Well, we take the square root of this x to the four, we take the square root of this four y to the four, and then, well, we'd multiply them and then also multiply by two. I think that's the standard way that we would get this here. So in the end, we would have something like this. 
So 4x squared y squared. But of course, if we're going to add that in, that means we have to subtract it as well. So let's do that. So this is going to be minus 4x squared y squared. But now I can rewrite this as x squared plus 2y squared quantity squared minus 2xy quantity squared. So we've got something like that. But notice that's a difference of squares. And what can I do with a dif difference of squares? Well, I can always factor it. And so let's do that. So it's going to be the first term minus the second term. And then it's going to be the first term plus the second term. So in other words, we're going to have x squared minus 2xy plus 2y squared times x squared minus 2xy. Sorry, I should say plus 2xy plus 2y squared. So there's our factorization of this x to the fourth plus 4y to the fourth. But it's also a factorization of our prime number here. But since it's a factorization of a prime number, that means that one of these numbers must be 1 and the other one equal to the prime because all of these are integers. Now, we know that this first term is smaller than the second term because check it out. This one has a minus sign attached to the 2xy. The other one has a plus sign. And x and y are both positive, meaning that, well, like I said, this one is smaller. But that means that I can assign this one the value of 1, or I guess I know that this one is equal to 1, given that it's a factorization of a prime. And then I know that this one right here is equal to p. But now we've got a choice. We can set this equal to 1 and solve for m, or we can set this equal to p and solve for m. So what we'll do is set this term equal to 1 and solve for m. So let's do that. So here we'll look at, like I said, x squared minus 2xy plus 2y squared equals 1. Now what I'd like to do is substitute back in for those x's and y's that I had before. So that's 2m plus 1 squared minus 2 to the m plus 1 times 2m plus 1 plus 2 times 4 to the m equals 1, where I did the arithmetic as necessary. Now let's multiply out this 2m plus 1. It'll give us 4m squared plus 4m. And then I'm going to write this as a plus 1. It's really 4m squared plus 4m plus 1. But I'll append the plus 1 because I have a 1 over there. And I'll just write it equal to 0 in the end. So we have minus 2 to the m plus 1, 2m plus 1 plus 2 to the power, or 2 times 4 to the m. So we've got something like that. Now, next up, we'll observe that everything here is a multiple of 2. So that means I can divide the entire equation by 2. That gives me 2m squared plus 2m, and then minus 2 to the power m times 2m plus 1 plus 4 to the m equals 0. Now, I'm going to start the top of the next board with that equation, and then we'll eventually or pretty quickly determine what m has to be. So on the last board, we arrived at the following equation. Given that p was this n to the 4 plus 4 to the n, and n was equal to 2m plus 1. Now I'm going to move some things around a little bit. So I'm going to subtract this 2m squared plus 2m to the other side of the equation, and then I'm going to factor a 2 to the m out of what's left. So we've got 2 to the m. And then after that, we're going to have 2 to the m minus 2m minus 1, that's from this right here, equals, now this is going to be minus 2m squared minus 2m. So we've got something like that. Now, let's observe that the right-hand side of that equation is, in fact, negative, or I guess it's less than or equal to 0, given the fact that we could definitely have m equal to 0. But let's observe that this bit right here, this 2 to the m minus 2m minus 1, is almost always positive. And that's because this exponential term is going to go grow way faster than that 2m um, minus 1. But needless to say, in order to get this left-hand side of the equation negative, I have to have this 2 to the m minus 2m minus 1 negative because this 2 to the power m is always positive. So putting it all together, we know that 2 to the m minus 
2m minus 1 has to be less than or equal to 0. Okay, great. But then putting that into a different form, we see that 2 to the m has to be less than or equal to 2m plus 1. So let's make a chart here to get an idea of what's going on. So I'm going to put four parts to my chart. So the first one will be my input m, and then we'll have 2 to the m, and then 2m plus 1. And then I'll just put another column here, which is, is this okay? In other words, is the inequality satisfied? So let's start populating this. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then let's see, this is going to give us 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. This is going to give us 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. And then, well, let's see where this is satisfied. So it's satisfied in the first condition. 1 is less than or equal to 1. It's satisfied in the second condition. 2 is less than or equal to 3 and the third condition. But notice after that, it seems not to be satisfied. So there seems to be this cutoff point at m equal 3. So I bet we could uh, make this claim here, which we could prove uh, via induction, and that is if m is bigger than or equal to 3, then 2 to the m is strictly bigger than 2m plus 1. Okay, so let's see how we might prove that. We'll do it by induction. Notice we don't need to do a base case. That's in our chart right here. So we just need to make an induction hypothesis. So let's suppose for some k bigger than or equal to 3, we have 2 to the k is bigger than 2k plus 1. And now let's consider the next case, which is 2 to the k plus 1. Now I can write that 2 to the k plus 1 is 2 times 2 to the k. And then I can use my inequality. That's going to be bigger than 2 times 2k plus 1. But that's pretty clearly equal to 4k plus 2. But then 4k plus 2, I think you can check, is bigger than 2 times k plus 1 plus 1. Now, I won't check that, but I think that's pretty easy to check. But that means that we have proven this claim, which means if m is bigger than or equal to 3, then this equation cannot be satisfied. So that means in the end, we have to check three cases. We have to check the case when m is equal to 0, which means that n is equal to 1, which means that p, which is this n to the 4 plus 4 to the n, is what? Well, 1 plus 4, which is 5. So check it out. We get a prime in that case. So I'll just put a p equals 5 here, and that's corresponding to this n is equal to 1. Now let's look at m equals 1, which is uh, giving us, which corresponds to n equals 3, which corresponds to p equals what? Well, we've got... 3 to the 4, which is 81, plus 4 to the 3rd, which is 64, which you can pretty quickly calculate to be 145, but 145 is well known not to be prime. It's divisible by 5. And then let's look at our last case, m equals 2. So that's going to correspond to n equals 5. But notice, what is that going to give us? Well, that's going to give us 625 plus 4 to the 5. Well, maybe I won't work out the detail for that, but maybe do that as a bit of a homework exercise and post in the comments if you get a prime in that case or not. And that's a good place to stop.